on this um what's on this in this field here don this is sweet potatoes that we had just planted okay um we planted some of them a week ago and then the ones that are being irrigated now we planted yesterday okay and it's very important if you don't get rain after you're planting to, to if you don't have irrigation it's it makes it real difficult for the for the plants to get us get established after you plant them you got your tractor hooked up to a pump it's hooked up to a water pump that runs on a on a pto okay power takeoff power takeoff okay and uh it it um produces about 110 gallons of water a minute so this is a pump That power takeoff for any number of things, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's used to run most most anything, most applications behind the tractors. Okay. They're all, they're all. If it requires a PTO, they're all adapted to. Okay. The tractors. Okay. And that thing actually moves, is that correct? You've got it on our cable and it... Yeah, it winches itself across the field. That's why they call it a water winch. A water winch. Yeah. Ah, okay. Because it, it drags a hose behind it and we hook it to a tree and it winches itself across the field. Nice. It's got three different gears on it. And depending upon how dry it is and oh as far as the speed goes as far as the speed goes so that's how you regulate how much water you put down is by how fast it it winches across right it's got one two and three and if i put it in the fastest gear i can put a half an inch of rain on see how far you get a dig bill before you get any moisture not even hitting it yet so these are these are now these are uh red potatoes what kind of these are red potatoes can i get you to hold those up again I wish I had a hill that had more on it. Here, let me put both these together. <laughs> there you go. You say these are potatoes that, uh, this is what potatoes look like when they need a little rain. Uh, yep. Okay. See these, actually, if we, if, we, if we did not get any more rain. Yeah. Or like, let's say this crop didn't get water any time this week. Uh-huh. And we didn't get irrigation on it, then what would happen is these small potatoes would size up as long as the vines are still green. Okay. That's how they would size up. But that's not what you want. You want your potatoes to size up uh, with moisture rather than from the vine. Oh, in other words, it would be taking the moisture moisture out of the vine there. It would be, that's, and then when the vine is dead, the potatoes are done growing. Okay. I mean, there's at least, at least a good month's growth here. Yeah. Where these potatoes could size, this potato being uh not much bigger than a marble right would could size up to the size of your fist by the time right. it's to be harvested so that rain is really critical right now very critical so some people go to las vegas to gamble and you choose to farm i guess huh that's exactly right <laughs> <laughs> well so here's the potatoes that we get at the farmer's market Nice. If if we don't get any rain, if this storm misses us tomorrow night, I'll have to set up irrigation over here, and that's going to take me a day or two. And wow. At this point, every day is critical. Sure. Great. So maybe, maybe Mother Nature will be kind to us tomorrow night. One hopes so. How many feet long are these? The greenhouse is 128 feet long. 128 feet long, and you've got all tomatoes in here. All tomatoes. And this uh, box that you've got in here, what is that? That box down there is a beehive. It's a beehive. It's, it's got bumblebees in it. Okay. And that's how we pollinate the tomatoes. Okay. When the flowers, flowers like this, when they open up the bee pollinates, 
maybe with a little luck we might see some bees pollinating. Okay. And then again we may not, it depends on what the humidity is in here. Right. And they only pollinate when the humidity is just right. Oh, is that right? But sometimes you'll still see them flying around pollinating. And it, it looks like the more ripe tomatoes are at the bottom, is at, that? At the bottom, and as they ripen, then you just, this will be, you'll be picking this cluster next week, the next week you'll be picking off of this cluster, this week you'll be picking off of this cluster. So they ripen from the bottom, and then they keep on growing. They grow up, they grow up to these spools that are on a string. Okay. And as they grow, you take and let them down like that and move them to the right. That's what they call leaning and lowering. I've never heard of that. And then the vines eventually at the end of the season you'll have a big long column of vines. <coughs> you can see the, <coughs> they've been lowered quite a few times already so the vines are all leaning this way. And you've already picked the tomatoes off the bottom. They've already been picked off the bottom. Like, okay. Like. So several, you, several weeks back. Okay, so you give them a little bit of slack with the reel with and the move reel, them to the right. Just like a domino effect. And when they reach the end? As they get down the end of the road, they do turn them and send them the other direction. And what are they planted in? They're planted in a media called perlite. 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 Okay. It's, it's a white media. It uh, comes out of volcanoes. Oh, and then it is that like a vermiculite or exactly, and okay. that's in the same family as that. It takes the place of soil. Okay. They, and how does it get watered? They take it out of volcanoes and then they pop it just like popcorn. Oh wow! And then it turns into this. I didn't realize that. It makes a good media base for soil. I did not realize that. And it really holds water well. And how does it get watered? Uh, through these feed tubes. Each tomato plant has its own feed tube. Wow. So and they have plenty of water. And it's all put on a, a chimel. On a okay. That's what they call cat facing. Cat facing. Cat facing, and it's due to cold temperatures during pollination. Interesting. Uh, right after pollination. Okay. So that's that tomato was formed way back in February. Wow. It was a very small tomato, and that's why it turned out that way. Cat facing. Interesting. So this is the strawberries. This is how we grow the strawberries. We grow them in stackers like this. Um, these, this is an ever-bearing variety. And this, now they're held up with pipes, and then you've got, this black pipe is what, water? This is a feed tube, and then they're just put on stackers that revolve, so when you're picking, you can just spin this like you can. Oh, very convenient. Like a miniature carousel, you might say. Yeah. And uh, here's, there's one that, being an ever-bearing variety, we'll see what the summer brings on them. Sure, sure. Nice. And this is the same way we grow our greens for the winter time. Oh, is it right? Is that the right? Winter farmers market. Oh. In stackers like this. Okay. This is probably, this is probably equivalent to um, maybe uh, several acres of greens outside. Sure. Because of the way we grow them. Because of the vertical stacking. Exactly. Perfect. Nice. And, the, and the same with the strawberry operation. Sure. That little uh, half acre of stackers is probably equivalent to like five, six acres of strawberries. That's amazing. And the tomatoes? The same thing. Wow. Same thing. Wow. It would be equivalent to... Wow. That particular house of tomatoes would probably be equivalent to about 50 acres of tomatoes. Wow.
Is it alright if we try one? <laughs> Well, we all enjoy your, your produce at the farmer's market, and we certainly appreciate you taking the time today to show us around. Oh, well, it was a it, pleasure. It was all mine. <laughs> okay, thanks, Don. <laughs>